Welcome to the AEM251 uh, laboratory. Today is your first experiment that is the can crush test. So uh, this equipment which you see over here, this is known as a universal testing machine. As the name suggests, it's called a universal testing machine because this machine can be readily adapted to do a wide range of tests. So you will see that we have a total of 12 experiments in this class and um, among those 12, almost 6 of them will be done by using this experiment. This equipment is very versatile, it has readily interchangeable parts and it can be suited to our needs very easily. So today what we are doing is, today we are doing the can crush test which is your lab 1. I hope that all of you have gone over the handout but before we exactly go into the experiment just a little overview on the equipment so that you know you understand better. So this is the frame, this is the testing frame and this part of the uh, equipment is fixed and this is the head which moves up and down this thing which you see over here this bottom like thing is a uh, is a load cell so what it does is it measures load so uh, so whatever load we put here in the machine whether it be compressive or tensile the load cell will easily be able to detect it so this is a very important piece of equipment because from the load we can readily find out stress so uh, now in order to operate this machine you should know how to operate it so this is the handheld remote which comes with the machine and it, you can fix it like this this is the emergency stop button if anything goes wrong you can just hit it and it, the experiment will stop so let me give you a brief overview on this uh, on the switches over here you don't need to know all of them but there are a couple of important ones which you really need to know the first one is this switch which has a kind of unlock sign so when I press on this when the green light is on that means all the switches in this panel will work when it's off that means the switches do not work the other thing is this up arrow and down arrow it's for moving the head up and down so I'll just give you a quick demo you will see here uh, if I press on the up arrow it's going up if I press the down arrow it's going down similarly you, you see this uh, switch over here which kind of you can rotate it uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise so this is basically your fine up and down control by that what I mean is if I am if I am uh, rotating the dial anti-clockwise or rather clockwise you can see that the head is coming down at a really really slow rate you can see the head coming down at a really really slow rate similarly if I uh, rotate its clock anti-clockwise you can see it going up so this is for fine control so that if you want to move the head really really slowly or just a little bit you might want to use this I'm going to show you what's the use of this button when we do this test okay so other than that uh, so this equipment comes with its own software so that makes our life very easy so before we go on to the test I'm going to give you a little overview on how to uh, switch on the software it's it's mostly plug and play so let us go to the PC so this is the icon you need to click this is called TW Elite this is the test suite which comes with the machine it has been provided by the manufacturer they have written up the software so we don't have to worry about it so once you double click on this a window like this will open so don't worry about what you see over here just go to file so I'm sorry uh, go to file and click on open test and there you can see your first experiment AEM251 can crush this so click on this and then click open so what that will do is it's going to open up that test so we have already pre-programmed the various tests or the various labs which we will perform using this machine so we just open that one so once you do that uh, that's uh, the test suite which is opened up so we can see over here it's displaying load it's displaying strain, it's displaying cross head and this is displaying time. So we'll come to each of this as we go through various experiments but for now the only thing which is important to us is the load. And you can see that the load is having a value of around negative pound force, negative 17 pound force which is basically a garbage value because right now I don't have any load over here. So your very first step once you open the screen is to zero out the load. What you do is you come here, right click on this and click on zero signal so what it will do is it's going to reset all the sensors 
and it's gonna zero out the load so that we can you know kind of start from zero now okay so that's all you need to do for this test and everything else you are you should be good so now just one more thing before we go on to do the test you can see over here it is known as the cross set control so like i told you when you press on this remote and when you press on this button and this light will glow this light will shut down and you can see that that means this remote is inactive and the control is with the computer so most of our tests we are going to do the experiment through the computer you do not have to use the remote except for one or two okay so i am going to put it back to manual again and then i am going to place it here it, it, is, it is placed very easily over here so now this is all you need to know for experiment one there are a lot of things with the software don't worry about it now we are going to go over it in details in the next experiment for now that's all you need to do so now coming back to the equipment we have here so like i told you so this equipment has readily interchangeable parts so and the part which i'm going to show you today is known as a compression plate you can see the surface is very flat and there is another one over here and this comes with pins okay so what we are going to do is we are going to place the compression plate over here really gently and we are going to place it down and then we are going to use the pin here and lift it up a little bit beware that you do not prick your hand or do not crush your hand so what you basically do is you try to align the hole with the hole of the pin and you just place the pin that way your plate is locked into position okay and now you take another plate and mind you it's very very heavy so be extra careful with it similarly just lift it up make sure that the holes are aligned and take the other pin and just put it inside so that's all you need to do as far as this test is concerned you might want to tighten this little bit by moving this but it really doesn't make any difference that much but make sure that these pins are inserted all the way we don't want them to fall off this is really heavy it might crush your hands so be extra careful in doing this experiment. so in this experiment all of you were supposed to bring a rinsed can of 12 ounce like this one you can bring any brand does not really matter that is a part of your uh, uh, doing the lab so your first step will be to take the can and place it over here just make sure that it's centered place it over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this remote off and what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to bring the head down but i'm not going to crush it okay so i'm going to try to bring the head down because i have you can see that i have a lot of space so i'm using the up arrow and the down arrow which has large movements for the head so i'm just going to try to bring it down and i'm going to make sure that there is a little bit gap between the top of the can and the head so you know so for that to happen what you do is you bring it to a considerable uh, distance from the can and then you use the fine button over here and just take it down and make sure that you just have a little bit of space between the top of the can and the top of the compression plate you don't want to put too little you don't want to put too much make sure that you have around say um maybe 1/8 of an inch like that so and you can just estimate it visually you don't have to measure it of the doubt that so just make sure you can just see a little bit of light for this which will make sure that the this surface is not touching the top surface of the can so i made sure that it's like that and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to place it back into position and like i said that most of the experiments we are going to let the computer do it so i'm going to press this button so once i press this button this remote is inactive and the control goes over to the computer so next you can see that there is a load of minus 8 pounds again this load is like it's not right it's an error so what we are going to do is we are going to right click over here again and hit the zero signal okay so once that is done now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the play button over here so once you click on the play button it will start run the test okay so let me click on the play button and let the computer do the experiment so just click hit okay so now you can see that if i see the test you can see that the computer is slowly bringing the head down and it's trying to press the can 
and the test will start stop automatically you are going to see a pop up coming up in that window and the experiment will stop so it's giving me a pop up now it's telling me return to zero and click yes what that means is the head will go back to its original position when we started the experiment okay so now you can see that i will be safely safely be able to remove the can so you can see the can is completely crushed okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to see what was the peak crushing load for this can which means that what was the uh, peak load which this can could take before it got crushed so in order to do that you can see there is a small graph over here and there is a small diamond like uh, a small diamond appearing over here which is called the break index so once i put my mouse over here it shows me the peak load over here and now you can see that there is a summary of it displayed over here as well the peak load is being displayed as 102.715 pound force so this is your peak load which this can could take before it got crushed so the whole idea of this experiment is we are going to crush multiple cans and we are going to study the peak load for each of those cans now we are going to record them and then we are going to perform statistical analysis on that to see how uh, the how how much variation we have and how much error affects our experiment and we will see how what are the sources of this error we will see what is the sources of so much variation for the peak load because you will see that every load every uh, can we have a unique peak load we cannot tell that this can has a set peak load you will see that every can is unique so that is something we are exploring in this experiment so uh, we are going to record all of them and then we are going to perform some statistical analysis so that is your take away from this experiment